It's in the Connect card to lift your concerns, and those concerns are received by our prayer team and know that you will be prayed for it. No matter how big or small the concern is, we will pray for you. Today, after church, is our church council. It is a meeting, an informational meeting. We have these once a quarter where we discuss the ins and outs of what is going on in the church. So you will hear presentations and reports about information that is happening in the church. We will meet in Heritage Hall. For those of you that may not be aware, Heritage Hall is a separate building that is uh, up off of 78, Highway 78. And so anybody is welcome to come. If you're watching online, there is an online link and you can view it online as well. Schools is getting ready to start back. So let me hear yay or all. Which one is it? Yay or all? Yay, uh, it's kind of a mixed crowd this morning, okay? If you are a kid, you're saying all. If you work in the school system as a teacher or an administrator or someone in other capacities, you're saying ah. Uh, if you are a parent, you're probably saying yay. So we've got mixed bags. So what we want to do as a church is we want to come alongside our local schools and the South Gwinnett area. And one of the greatest needs that they have said that, we, uh, that they need are boxes of Kleenex and sharpen number two pencils. And so we are doing a collection and our goal is to collect 500 boxes of Kleenex and 500 boxes or packs of sharpen pencils. So far, we've collected 70 boxes or packages of pencils and 121 boxes of tissue. So we've got a little bit further to go. Next Sunday is the final Sunday for the collection, so let's work so that we can uh, get toward this goal. There are opportunities to uh, deposit your gifts in the gathering room here outside the church to my right to your left, in front of the church office, and in our Christian Life Center. So we're grateful for your generosity in giving that we will serve our students and our teachers in our school system. We will celebrate our teachers and our students and our administrator and our cafeteria workers and our bus drivers and anyone else in the school on August 7th. Mark your calendars. One service in the Christian Life Center at 1030. One service, August 7th. If you come at 11 o'clock, we will certainly uh, uh, enjoy your presence and it will be a shorter service for you. <laughs> but we look forward for all of us being together. We were only going to do this four times a year based upon what we heard from the congregation in doing this last uh, year. We will do it four times a year and the first one will be back to school and every one of them will be focused on a particular area so that we, when we get together as one church, there's a purpose for it. I want to invite you to prepare your hearts and mind for worship. As a call to worship, we print it on the screen. I will read the yellow print and you will respond by reading the white. God, listen to my prayer. I call out to God. God hears our calls for help and mercy. Our trust is in God. Amen. Good morning, everyone. As was said, we'll be doing a lot of singing today, so I hope you have your singing voice with you. We'll be singing camp tunes out of the Cokesbury Hymnal. If you haven't used it before, it's that bluish gray book. And I believe all of our songs today are straight out of that. We're going to open today with number 124. This is What a Friend. Go ahead and stand as we say.
seated. The song says, what a friend we have in Jesus. A friend that is closer than a sister, closer than a brother. And a modern translation is, Jesus is closer than the clothes that you have on your back. That's how close Jesus wants to be. And we take our concerns to God. The song says, take them to the Lord in prayer, whatever concerns we have. We have concerns and celebrations and joys, and we want to celebrate a 50th anniversary of Bob and Judy Knobs that is coming around the corner. We celebrate with you on that. We also know that there are several concerns in our congregation and in our community and in our world. And so we lift up those concerns. I invite you to lift those up. Take them to the Lord in prayer. And all prayer is, friends, is talking, but more importantly, listening to Almighty God. Whatever concerns you have, whatever ails your heart, Whatever issue you've been struggling with, whether it's a decision, whether it's regret, whether, as we will hear today, it's dealing with betrayal, whatever it is, we serve a God who's bigger than any issue that we have. And this God wants to hear from you and from me, the God of the universe wants to hear from us. And so I invite you to take your concerns to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, nobody knows the trouble that we see. God, sometimes it feels like nobody knows our sorrow. Nobody knows the trouble we see. But, oh God, we come to you and we place those concerns at the foot of the cross. We place those concerns at the altar, at the throne of grace. Hear our prayer, O oh God, for those who are suffering, those who are ill, those who have lost loved ones. God, we pray for your Holy Spirit touch, your miracle working power. We pray for healing in the name of Jesus for those who need your touch. God, we pray for comfort for those who are lonely. God, we pray for comfort for those who have lost loved ones. God, we pray for direction for those that are sitting in front of us, beside us, and behind us. Hear our prayer, O oh God. Forgive us, O oh God, for those times where we have had great intentions, but the spirit was willing and the flesh was weak and we had poor follow-through. O oh God, help us to listen to your voice. Help us to call upon you and allow you to be closer than the clothes that we wear. Hear us in our trouble, O oh God. Forgive us for not being obedient, church. Hear our cry, O oh God. Help us to be faithful. Help us to be your people. Help us to be your witnesses. And so we can sing like the songwriter says, glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. God, may our song be glory, hallelujah. Because we make this prayer in the name of the one who taught us to say by praying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. As we continue to worship, we're going to go into our camp tunes today. These are more songs that may be very familiar. They're out of the Cokesbury, and we'll just be doing a verse of each to bring back that nostalgic feeling as we really check into worship. I will do my best to call out numbers and titles as we move through, but today we're gonna to start with number 202. This is Beautiful River. and gladness. tenderly number 137 
I surrender all. Thank you all for singing. Next week is our last time to sing. And so thank you for this opportunity. I hope, we hope and pray that this is an opportunity for all of us to participate in worship. Worship is what we do before God. It is something worthwhile because of who God is. We listen to God's word. We hear that word expound upon. We sing the praises of God. And we also offer ourselves as a living sacrifice through our generosity. I am grateful to serve a church that is generous to Snellville United Methodist Church. Thank you for your generosity. When you give to this church, your gifts goes to make an impact. There are several ways that you can give. If you're here in person, we have offering trays at every exit door that you may drop your gift into the basket. If you are watching online, our online host will provide you a link. If you will follow that link, we will receive your gift. You can mail the church check, you can mail the check in, or you can come by the church office and bring it in person. Again, we're grateful for your generosity because when you give, your gift makes an impact in this local community, in this region, and the world. It helps people like the Cheney family, one of our own, who are missionaries in Kosovo. I invite you to turn your attention to the screen to see how your gifts and your generosity is helping the people in Kosovo. Good morning, Silva UMC. Where are the Cheneys? We're so glad to be with you this morning. Uh, we really appreciate your prayer and encouragement and support over the past year as we have taken our family uh, to follow the Lord's call to Kosovo. I'm Michael. And I'm Anna, and we have two children, Logan, who is four years old, and our daughter, Lydia, who is two. Um, I grew up going to Snellville UMC um, since I was five. My parents are Carrie and Sarah Gray. Hi, so we're in southeastern Europe in the Balkans. And most of them, it's about one country north, about two countries north of Greece, one country east of Albania. Um, it's a country that has dealt with war and trauma in the late, late 90s and early 2000s. Um, because of the war, it has one of the youngest populations in Europe, um, and it's a predominantly Muslim country. We've come to Kosovo through TMS Global, formerly the Mission Society, and here we work with a non-governmental organization called Elevate Outdoor Adventures and Leadership. Elevate works primarily for getting people outdoors where barriers are broken down and conversation flows more easily through hiking trips, biking, backpacking, uh, and all that sort of thing. Elevate uses those opportunities to share kingdom conversations about Jesus and about um, the, the kingdom of God. Through Elevate, we're able to pour into young people spiritually while helping them develop their leadership, personal, and teamwork skills 
uh, to better themselves and their community. So we've been in Kosovo for about five months and we've been spending our time, uh, most of our time doing language learning. In our next six months, we will be working on um, furthering our language and, um, and then in January and February, we'll step into a full leadership role with Elevate. You can be praying for us as we continue to adjust to a new culture and way of life, as we're learning the Albanian language, as we work through government protocols that are foreign to us in a foreign language, uh, and as we begin to start a search for a vehicle. If you'd like to become a partner with us in our work here, you can visit the website below and uh, email us at the email in the text at the bottom.
Good morning. Good morning. Our road trip is coming to an end as summer is, right? Summer, summer's coming to an end. Not in Georgia. That happens, what, in like September, I think, or October. Uh, our scripture lesson this morning is from Psalm 55. God, listen to my prayer. Don't avoid my request. Pay attention. Answer me. I can't sit still while complaining. I'm beside myself over the enemy's noise at the wicked person's racket because they bring disaster on me and harass me furiously. My heart pounds in my chest because death's terrors have reached me. Fear and trembling have come upon me I'm shaking all over. I say to myself, I wish I had wings like a dove. I'd fly away and rest. I'd run so far away. I'd live in the desert. I'd hurry to my hideout, far from the rushing wind and storm. Baffle them, my Lord. Confuse their language because I see violence and conflict in the city. Day and night they make their rounds on its walk and evil and misery live inside it. Disaster lives inside it. Oppression and fraud never leave the town square. It's not an enemy that is insulting me. I could handle that. It's not someone who hates me, who is exalted over me. I could hide from them. No, it's you, my equal, my my close companion, my good friend. It was so pleasant when together we entered God's house with the crowd. Let the death devastate my enemies. Let them go to the grave alive because evil lives with them, even inside them. But I call out to God, and the Lord will rescue me. At evening, morning, and midday, I complain and moan so that God will hear my voice. He saves me, unharmed from my struggle, though there are many who are out to get me. God who is enthroned from ancient days will hear and humble them because they don't change and they don't worship God. My friends attacked his allies, breaking his covenant. Though his talk is smoother than butter, war is in his heart. Though his words are more silky than all They are really drawn swords. Cast your burdens on the Lord. He will support you. God will never let the righteous be shaken. But you, God, bring the wicked down to the deepest pit. Let bloodthirsty and treacherous people not live out even half their days. But me, I trust in you. This is the word of God for the people of God. God. If I'm honest, as I was reading my assigned passage a couple of weeks ago, as I was reading today's psalm for this sermon series, this is what I thought. Oh, no. Who wants to sing a song of betrayal? Who? Uh, Y'all aren't raising your hands, so I'm assuming you don't either. I mean, unless you're writing a, a good country ballad, what about one of those happier songs? Uh, Isn't that the song that we want to sing when we're going on a road trip? As a little girl, uh, we took many road trips. Many road trips, mostly to one location, Raleigh, North Carolina. See Grandma, 
Papa and Granny and the cousins and aunts and uncles. We, we traveled on that road trip up 85, and, and we were in our Pontiac wood-paneled station wagon. And we would sing. Well, actually, my daddy and I would sing. And my sisters would express words of critique. But Daddy and I would continue on with our choruses because hecklers would not discourage us from singing on the road. But the songs that we chose were usually upbeat and sometimes they were seasonally appropriate Songs of betrayal were not on our top ten song list. A song of betrayal made me think of that road trip where the GPS has taken you in directions that you would not have chosen if you had only known. Have y'all had one of those trips? You know, where the GPS has, has taken you on a, a better route. When you've ended up on a gravelly, rough road and you've hit every pothole there is and sometimes you're coming to a dead end and if you had only known that winding road that leads you to nowhere where a more direct route could have taken you if you'd only waited two more minutes. Road trips, aren't they meant to be fun? But I was thinking about road trips and I, I was wondering if, if you've ever traveled long distances with your, let's just say, family of four, just a number out of the blue, then you know the ride in the car. Well, some of it can be filled with laughter, but, but most oftentimes, especially with younger children, that road trip is, is usually filled with a lot of complaints. He's on my side. How much further do we have to go? I'm thirsty. I'm hungry. Are we almost there? It's not like we're sitting in the back seat singing, We Are Family. I think you get the picture. But the GPS mode of traveling, it, we know it doesn't avoid the potholes. We know it doesn't avoid those rough payments. And sometimes these routes are part of a journey. Not because we chose it. Not because we wanted to go that way, but sometimes the road and the route have been changed by someone who purposely set us off course. But the song is still important to sing. I don't know about y'all, but for me, sometimes singing can, can release those feelings and emotions that can't be expressed with just normal words. Even when it's hard to sing. Even when it's a song like a song of betrayal that is hard for our for our, our voices to sing because it's hard on our heart. It feels raw. It's not a catchy tune. It's not one you want to hum for days, but, but it's real, authentic. And the psalm begin, psalmist begins with these simple words, God, listen to my prayer. 
betrayal, pain, heartache, heartbreak. As I was reading the psalm, I kept thinking about my own life, I and mean, maybe you thought of some of your own stories. And, and you know, there's the expected hurt caused by the enemy. The, the enemy is always present, and, and so when the psalmist is singing this song, and in this lyric, when he's singing, I'm beside myself over the enemy's noise at the wicked person's racket because they bring disaster on me and harass me furiously, well, we understand that lyric. You know, we understand because we accept the reality As there is goodness of God, there is also the evilness of the devil, so to speak. We understand the enemy. But as I continued reading the lyrics of the song, I began to wonder, was this the true concern for the psalmist prayer? Was this really the true the deepest need for his call for help. After all, uh, the, isn't it expected behavior for the enemy to betray you, right? I mean, it's in the term enemy, right? Expected. Enemy. But as the song continues on, as the psalmist continues to express his call out for help from God, the, the betrayer is not a stranger. Not a stranger. Not an enemy. The psalmist is calling out for help because the one who betrayed him was someone with whom he worshipped. It's not an enemy that is insulting me. I could handle that. It's not someone who hates me, who is exalted over me. I could hide from them. But it, it's you, my equal, my close companion, my good friend. It was so pleasant when together we entered God's house with the crowd. And that's when my heart sank. An enemy expected. A friend is heartbreaking. A friend, a fellow worshiper, not the expected, but instead a close companion, a good friend. And as I was reading the psalm, as I was thinking about this song that they were singing on their, on their road trip, I felt sadly some of us, some of us have sung the song. This, this song has kept people from sitting in the pew. This song has, has, has made people leave the church. This song has made people believe that Christians aren't loving and that God doesn't care. I have sung this song. We traveled this gravel, rough road. We've hit the deepest and, and most painful potholes there are on the route. And no, it's not a song that we would ever choose to sing. 
because the, the heartbreak, the heartache of betrayal occurs not when an enemy does something against you, but when trust is broken within a very close relationship. That's the song of betrayal. It's not the only time that this psalm, um, and this, it's not the only song, psalm in which this song is sung. If you, we read the, the whole entire book of the psalms, there are songs contained within it where, where someone's been hurt and betrayed. Where cries out to God have gone because only God can truly hear that heartache. How could it happen within the trusted community of God's very house? As we look around our world today, as we, as we hear news about the church, we have to ask ourselves the question, how can we hurt one another and believe others will come to know Jesus Christ if they are seen hurt instead of healing. So a cry goes out to God. Because only God can understand such heartbreak of betrayal. How many times has God been betrayed by us? Us. His precious creation, the one with whom he desires a growing relationship. If we're honest, if we confess, like our Holy Communion confessional, if we listen to the words that are included in the confessional of Holy Communion, we're convicted. We confess that we've not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We've not done your will. We've broken your law. We've rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us. As Jesus is God in the flesh, God in the flesh felt it every day that he walked on this earth, and yet he continued on the path, he continued on the journey. He felt it, experienced and betrayed by his closest companions. You see, I don't think that it was Jesus' I don't think Jesus' heart was broken when those who didn't know him were against him, considered the enemy, but it was the ones who were walking with him. The ones who walked with him and betrayed him. His friends. God understands the cry, the need for us to be rescued from such a rough, bumpy, unpaved road. Nope, this was not the psalm, the song that I want to sing. And it's a petition for help from God, it complaints against the betrayer, and yet there's that ultimate trust in God. The song is sung because through that cry there is the the release of the ache to God, the, the release to God for help, the call for help, and, and that assurance, that assurance that, that our God will take the wheel. Cast your burden on the Lord. For he will support you. God will never let the righteous be shaken. And then it ends with these words, but me, I trust in you. I trust in you. 
Dear God, I trust in you. Broken trust between close companions is hard on the heart. Betrayer is not expected from a close friend. And so my prayer today, my prayer ongoing, is that we will emulate trust so that we will never cause another person to sing this song. My prayer is that this song will not be needed and that we may be sources of hope and healing, not pain and despair. Dear God, hear our prayers. Amen. In closing today, we'll be singing a hymn that echoes many of those sentiments of the desire to be seen, the desire to be heard, and also putting that ultimate trust forward. So this will be number 149. This is Pass Me Not. Please stand. of peace, healing, and hope for the world around us, and help us always be ones who can be trusted as we emulate Christ our Savior. In his name we pray, amen. amen.